Please begin the roll call. Ted Davis, Los Angeles. Since 1976, when this campus first opened. Andrew Stevens, Woodland, November 17th, 2005. The CHP Academy has served as a rallying point for all CHP employees and their families. It is a solemn ceremony held once a year honoring the fallen. Eric Manny, Fort Tejon. Cadets, officers, and families of California Highway Patrol officers killed in the line of duty gather here at the CHP Academy to give voice to the names on the brass plaques on this memorial fountain. This is the ceremony the public sees, performed once a year, but before they call out the 225 names carved into metal, there's another ceremony. One held in the same courtyard at the same fountain. First time I participated in this ceremony, it was a little emotional for me. Two steps forward, march, dance, A ceremony just as solemn. Being out here, you actually get a chance to see firsthand the names on the plaques. Cadets from the CHP Academy take time from their lunch to honor those same fallen officers by polishing their name plaques every Wednesday. It brings life to the names. Jessica Bonner is one of those cadets. She has just five weeks left in the Academy, but she takes the lesson this ceremony drives home seriously. It makes you remember the fragileness of life. It remembers, it makes you remember how, you know, short life can be and to take life you know, to its fullest, live it to its fullest, it makes you remember those people on the fountain that paid the ultimate sacrifice uh, for others. This ceremony today brought that home to me with such a great impact that we're family. Fallen officers like Walter Frego, killed 40 years ago with three other officers in New Hall. His wife, Nikki, attended the public ceremony for the first time this year. You would think that it would not be quite so emotional after so many years, but Walt was my first love. We met in high school, my only love, and it still, it still touches and hurts the heart. That just doesn't go away. Can I give you a hug? You could see how it's touched her, this event, and that's what this is all about. CHP Commander Joe Farrow echoed the sentiment of the cadets and officers alike, that no matter where you live, the Academy will always be home. And the names on the plaques, including the name of Walter Frego, should be honored and remembered, along with their families. I knew their story like I've known her forever because when I was a cadet here, we all learned about what happened in Newhall. And in stark contrast to the ceremony held just a day before, the ceremony held each week by the cadets is silent. It's a silence that Cadet Jessica Bonner says isn't just ceremony, it's a reminder. When the fountain ceremony is going on, you realize that, you know, in a couple weeks, it might be your last day. And so when you hear the silence, I think people, you know, they take that break from the academy to realize that mm, this job is, it's tough, but, you know. It's rewarding. It's rewarding, yes. One group polishes, and all the other cadets look on. Cadets like Theodore Ray, five weeks from graduating himself. And see kind of what we're embarking on, on this career as a cadet, and get a feeling of being a part of this, this family. Two steps backward! After the cleaning is complete, a final inspection. He's it! Oh. And a final honor. Company! Before they leave, in the same stoic silence. It makes you remember the fragileness of life. It brings life to the names. We put on our vests, we put on our boots, and you go out in the patrol vehicle. You never know when, what day could be your last day. Dave Manocherry for Common Ground. You ready? Pitch. Here we go. Sing like you mean it. Ready? And sing for. Two years ago, if you told Christiana Quick Cleveland she'd be teaching a bunch of senior citizens, Catherine, Melma, Carol, Judy. most of whom can't even read music. Do you have a background in music or singing? No, not at all. 
This is my first time ever singing with a group of people. She'd have never believed you. Please give me that note. Please. There are a lot of challenges working with seniors. Challenges is a vast understatement. One member, Don Smith, is legally blind. I have a hearing, hearing problem, so <laughs> I can't keep up uh, my hearing aid loud on one side or I hear too much else. So what would push a veteran music teacher to take up such a challenge? It's not so easy for musicians to make a livelihood, and this had a grant supporting it, and it, it paid well. That grant is actually the culmination of several years of workshops, where the Hart Senior Center and the Sacramento Metropolitan Arts Commission found an interesting phenomenon. First time unison, then in parts. The arts, particularly music, exercised not only the body, but the brain. In the we know that being creative as we age is a good way to keep healthy, keep our brains active. And so we've done a lot of programming in this arena. Um, and uh, after uh, some workshops that lasted for several years, we decided we really wanted to get into music. Teaching those skills required finding a veteran teacher with patience and a whole lot of stamina. Someone like Christiana Quick Cleveland. If you continue to exercise your mind, you can stay agile, <laughs> flexible in your thinking, flexible in your movements of your body, then your retirement years may look very different from someone who is just uh, very passive or looking at television, doesn't get out. And as much energy as Christiana and her co-director Catherine Fagiolo expend, they know the choir is working just as hard, mentally and physically. So everybody's on their last pitch. No, 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 never sit idle. There's one thing, when you don't sit idle for a minute, as you can see. Okay, you're always on the move. I did on not everything. expect it to be drawn out so much and to feel as uplifted and to know that there was going to be a lot of work. And an amazing thing happened for Christiana. As soon as she started working toward performances like their annual Christmas concert, she started to get back far more than she was giving. Their spirit or their energy is, um, it's, it's just a very, it has a very dynamic pull much more so than other choirs. When they succeed, it is such a, it's such a big, big thing. In Sacramento, Dave Manocherry, KCRA 3 News. T minus 10, nine. It's eight, easy to think being seven, in outer space is six, filled with danger. Five. Well, it was on the top of my mind for all of our minds. We have a go for main engine start. Five, four. But one of the three, most dangerous three, times four, in any space flight is from two, one, and lift off of through. Challenger, go and throttle up. Challenger, go and throttle up. It's worth the risk. This is something that I think humanity should do, must do, has to do. But you have to accept significant risk when you fly in space. We felt that it was worthwhile. I still feel that it's worthwhile. Astronaut Steve Robinson has been through that dangerous experience four times. But in the back of your mind, you're going, I'm on a rocket <laughs> and, it's, and we're shaking around and I'm being smashed into the seat and things are bouncing around. My job was a flight engineer, so I had to watch all the instruments, think about all the systems. It never got any easier. Look for malfunctions, wait for something to fail. The igniters have been lit. Nine, but NASA's eight, next manned seven, space mission, the Orion, might just help those astronauts breathe a little minute. easier. If anything were to go wrong, what we'd want to do is get the crew away from the launch vehicle. Sam Wiley is the head of human space development for Aerojet Rocketdyne. Part of his job... A launch abort system that will actually yank the capsule off the launch vehicle in the event that anything goes wrong. It's your ejection seat. Launch, launch. An ejection seat on steroids. It's a, it's a heck of a ride. It puts the astronauts under about 13 Gs of acceleration. That ride will engage in a millisecond if anything goes wrong during launch. 
And then once the capsule's away, this jettison motor, this thing produces about 40,000 pounds of thrust in about a second and a half. The system has already been tested once a couple years ago. And so it snapped it off the ground, flew it up in the air. This motor fired, separated the launch abort system from the capsule, and the capsule went through its whole landing sequence and safely landed. And liftoff at dawn, the dawn of Orion. And, and again in December. And we have launch abort system jettison. This launch abort system is not new technology. This is actually going back to some of the things in Apollo. Even one of the Mercury missions used a launch abort system to remove the crew capsule from a malfunctioning rocket. But it's a way to protect the crew. So yes, it's all about safety and safety of the crew and making sure that they're good on their way. Booster ignition and liftoff of Discovery on a mission to study planet Earth. Yet none of the shuttle missions had this system. Uh, something went wrong on the way up during the rocket-powered ascent up through the atmosphere. And liftoff of Shuttle Endeavour. Um, then you had to deal with it in very complicated ways. You could not escape the spacecraft. But it will all change as part of what NASA is calling the journey to Mars. At least 31 seconds, still looking good. It's a mission Sam Wiley and Steve Robinson are excited about even if they are down here on the ground. It's going to be great to be back in the business of launching American citizens on American-made hardware. Beginning America's new journey to the moon, Mars, and beyond. And Robinson's successors in the space program can know that this most dangerous part of the mission Stop. might just be a little bit safer. I flew high-performance jet aircraft for 17 years, and I always had an ejection seat. That made me feel good. I never used it but it always made me feel very secure. We hope that we never have to use it, but it's there in, the, in, in case that something goes on, we can save the crew. Last Edison. In Rancho Cordova, Dave Manocherry for Common Ground. Go, good boy.